I got a bit of a crazy list for you guys. I mean, previously we ranked power levels by class, but now I want to cover power levels in general, from the strongest old god creations to the strongest classes to the most powerful monsters on Azeroth. We'll start off with physically strongest races, then continue with the strongest races based on intellect, and then we'll rank the playable races from paladins to warlocks. Then we are going to go into the crazy cosmological guys, the strongest of them all, and then we're going to divide it by armies, so the most powerful scourge creations, old god creations, and demons. We will then finish it up with the most powerful regular monsters you don't want to run into across Azeroth, as well as zones. So let's get into it. Top 10 Physically Strongest Races in World of Warcraft. Talking about my pick for the toughest playable races in the game. Putting the focus on brute strength, but not just overall size, but how they would fare in unarmed combat. So, without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10. Humans. Actually, very similar to us, but the only major difference is that much of the dwarves, they descend from the titans and presumably still carry some of that heritage. Their average height is around 6 feet tall, a bit more than 180 centimeters, although they can reach up to 6 feet 6 or around 2 meters. Weight wise, they are between 200 pounds to 250, so between 90 and 120 kilograms. Overall, this is pretty big, but when compared to other races, they are among the smallest. What they lack in raw power though, they make up for in agility and dexterity. They are stocky and muscular, but also slender. Not as slender as the elves, but not as stocky as the dwarves, so somewhere in between. They make good warriors, and there are countless examples of them fighting orcs 1v1 and defeating them, as after all there is much more to combat than just size, and their agility can come in really handy. However, brute strength wise, they definitely wouldn't be able to fare well in unarmed combat against some of the more stronger aces on the list. Number 9. Dwarves. Despite being the smallest of all of these, dwarves are one of the physically strongest. Their average height is around 5 feet tall, which is about 150 centimeters. However, they weigh between 200 and 250 pounds, which is between 90 and 110 kilograms. The build of the dwarves is incredibly robust, sturdy and stocky. They're essentially like a small block of muscle. Most of their strength comes from their titanic heritage and the fact that they used to be earthen, a race made of living stone. While the curse of flesh weakened them, they nonetheless possess their ancient strength. Dwarves aren't blessed when it comes to agility and dexterity, but their sturdy build makes them excellent warriors and when they are fully armored, they are a very tough opponent. Still, the reason they are near the beginning of the list is, after all their size, pound for pound, they may be one of the most powerful races, but keep in mind, after all they're only 5 feet tall, while other races can be twice their size and weight and even more. In unarmed combat, no strength can really help you if your opponent is over 2 times bigger and heavier than you. Number 8. Cool Tyran Humans even though I already talked about the humans, the Kul Tirans need to be an entirely separate point. They're generally the same as humans genetically, but some among them are almost a different species. They average nearly 8 feet tall, so around 240 centimeters, and by their looks, must weigh as much as an orc, definitely in the 300 to 400 pound range, so at the minimum 150 kilograms. Not much is known about the origin of their size, but some say it is due to them retaining more of their vital genes as, after all, humans are titan creations. Seeing that the Coltirans are generally leaning in the way of fat, they might be slower, less explosive and have less endurance, but nonetheless, for humans, they possess quite a lot of strength and size. Number 7. Night Elves Many might not expect them on this list, but when you examine them closely, you realize that Night Elves are actually one of the best warrior races. As they descend from the Trolls, the Night Elves are similar in size and are between 7 and 8 feet tall, so nearly 2.5 meters, and they weigh anywhere from 2 to 300 pounds, so between 90 and 140 kilograms. The build of the Night Elves is tall, slender and athletic. 
They're known for endurance, speed, agility and even strength. Realistically, they have one of the best builds for fighting and when on the higher spectrum of size, they can be bigger than an average orc. Night Elves make excellent rogues and warriors that rely on swiftness and speed. They might not be able to wrestle a Torin with bare hands, but they are one of the most agile races on this list. Number 6. Draenei the oldest race that we have today, formerly the Eredar, now a faction known as the Draenei. Their height ranges from 7 to 8 feet, so between 210 to 250 centimeters. Now combine that with their weight that is between 3 and 400 pounds, so between 130 to 20 kilograms, they're incredibly large creatures. Draenei possess a sturdy and muscular build, although they aren't really famous for just their physical strength. This is why they make excellent paladins, as they can combine their inborn strength with their intelligence and their faith in the light. Agility wise, as they have coups, they're kinda awkward and not exactly explosive or sneaky. We've seen Draenei defeat orcs in combat, but we have also seen orcs easily overpowering the Draenei, so in terms of ranking, I would say they're similar to the orcs and it depends on individual combat. Draenei may not be the strongest warrior race, but their genetics and size alone puts them amongst the strongest. Number 5. Pandaren Pandaren are one of those races where it is really hard to tell what they got in store, which is exactly how the human and the orc felt when they faced one in combat in that famous cinematic. They seem to just be like this fat and cute creature, but when you learn more about them, you realize that they're actually ferocious beasts. An average Pandaren is about 7 feet 5 or 230 centimeters and they're speculated to weigh up to 500 pounds, which is about 230 kilograms and even more. When you just take this into consideration, you realize that they're actually massive. Not only that, but they actually have claws and sharp teeth, much like a bear. On average, they don't really have an aggressive or a warrior mentality, but they can train and become masters of hand-to-hand -hand combat like the monks. We've seen Pandaren having incredible reflexes, speed, agility, as well as fists that can break through armor. I know this is more of a class thing, but the class was developed with the Pandaren build in mind. Terran Zhu, one of the most powerful Pandaren, actually posed quite a serious threat to Ganosh and nearly defeated him, which is quite an accomplishment seeing that Ganosh was already a seasoned warrior at this point and most other orcs were completely afraid of him. So even though Pandaren might not look very tough on first glance, they are amongst the physically most imposing playable races. Number 4. Orcs Orcs are amongst the most iconic races of the game, generally seen as strong, physically powerful and brutish. So it is of no surprise that they would be near the top of this list. On average, they're around 7 feet tall, so about 210 centimeters. However, they can be anywhere from 6 feet 3, 190 centimeters, up to 8 feet tall, around 2.5 meters. Well, the game makes it seem like they're hulk sized. They can range from small pion like to hunched to massive voice. However, on average, they are a very strong and tough race. They weigh about 300 pounds or 140 kilograms, but they can reach up to 200 kilograms or 450 pounds. Orcs are said to be natural born warriors, essentially a warrior race. While they are really big and strong, they are also agile and capable of more than just sheer strength. Maybe not as agile as the night elves or the humans, but definitely not as slow as the Torrent. There are accounts of orcs being able to throw a horse and even defeat a gigantic monstrosity such as Manrot without any particular spells or magic. As warriors rarely have any spells or secret powers, looking at the achievements of the race's warriors is a good indicator of how strong they are. In terms of the orcs, they are very high on this list. Number 3. Trolls 
Even though many see trolls as just lanky and skinny and one of the weak races, they're actually huge. They average 8 feet in height, which is nearly 2.5 meters. They weigh between 250 to 300 pounds, which is between 110 to 140 kilograms. Now, what is really important to note is that trolls are a very diverse race and some subspecies are stronger than others. For example, the averages I mentioned are mainly for jungle trolls and the dark spear. However, ice trolls are said to be twice the girth of their counterparts and can even be over 10 feet tall, which is over 3 meters. The Zandalari are also said to be one of the strongest of their species. It is mentioned that they are nearly a head taller than the Dark Spear and they are incredibly physically strong and agile. They can easily lift jungle trolls with both hands and can puncture skilled armor breastplate with just their thumbs. We've even seen females in the Lari trolls lifting up males with a single hand, which is a good indicator of strength as they do weigh a lot. Outside of just their size, the trolls are known for their endurance and agility as well as their regeneration, making them excellent warriors, rogues and hunters. Interestingly enough, dire trolls exist, which are even bigger versions, some altered alchemically and some are just born that way. Now, taking all of these factors into consideration, trolls are one of the most physically powerful races on Azeroth. Number 2. Vorgan May not be the biggest race, but definitely one of the most powerful. Vorgan are wolf-like creatures that possess incredible strength, agility, speed and endurance. They may not seem large, but they actually are. They average 8 feet in height, so about 2.5 meters, and are up to 300 pounds and more, which is over 140 kilograms. However, their actual power comes from their ferocity and agility. The Vorgan are literally the definition of explosive strength, and are known to be able to leap a big distance and to completely overwhelm their enemies with speed. They're the fastest of all the races, and at the same time, have claws and very sharp teeth so fighting them unarmed is essentially like fighting someone with a weapon. Gan Greymane almost defeated Sylvanas in that duel and he really didn't have much power other than his Worgen form. To top all of this, Worgen have all of their senses enhanced, smell, hearing and reflexes. Overall, vicious creatures that are more beasts than humanoids and for that reason they are one of the strongest races in the game. And lastly, number 1, Torin. It is really of no surprise to anyone that the Tauren are at the top of this list. Averaging 10 feet in height or 3 meters, they really are the largest playable race that we have. Sure, some races can reach this height, but this is what a regular Tauren is like and they can be even bigger than this. The weight of the Tauren is insane, they are about 400 pounds or 180 kilograms, but can go up to nearly 1000 pounds or half a ton. Keep in mind, this is an average of 200 kilograms or more of straight out muscle and strength. They literally use parts of a tree as a weapon and we've seen Torin easily smashing a bear in the original cinematic. Now, their biggest weakness is their agility and dexterity as they have hooves and they weigh a lot. Because of this, they may not be the fastest or the most skilled warriors, but they do make up for it in just sheer size. When you got a 3 meter tall monster that weighs half a ton and you equip him with a ton of metal armor, there is barely a warrior that would be able to do much to him to even move him. A counter argument is that Kirn lost to Garrosh, but keep in mind, he really bested him in that duel and he was very old, while Garrosh was in his prime and the poison was what changed the odds. So in my opinion, the Tauren are the physically strongest playable race within the game. While physical strength is one aspect, intellect is huge as well and the two are not mutually exclusive for a lot of races. Top 10 most intelligent races in World of Warcraft. As many races are very similar, I'm going to be bundling up some of them and will be focusing on their intellect, mainly in regards to technology and magic. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10. Torrent. 
Torin are one of those races that have a ton of potential, but they don't really use it. We know for a fact that they're intelligent, but they just channel it in a different way when compared to other races. This comes down to their culture, which focuses on aligning with nature and living as close as possible to it. Therefore, they live in very primitive tents, and when compared to other races, they may seem like savages. However, Torin make excellent druids, and they're one of the wisest races out there. When the time calls for it, they can invent things and build, creating complex architecture such as the city of Thunderbluff and even the elevators to reach the city from the plains. We have also seen the high mountain Torin having quite some advanced architecture. Torin were very recently exposed to science and technology and they generally avoid it as in some cases it is mutually exclusive to their culture. But they seem to have picked it up when necessary very quickly which is due to their intelligence and today Torin scientists and engineers exist. Number 9. Orcs Many might not think orcs would even have a place on this list as they're considered big and strong but dumb brutish types. However, orcs actually do possess quite a bit of intellect. As they evolve from ogres, they're the smartest race in the hereditary line. To many people, this isn't surprising as there were many extremely powerful characters utilizing magic that were of orcish origin. Characters like Uldan and Azul that left a big mark on not just Azeroth and Draenor but the entire universe. Orcs do make good mages, warlocks and shamans, although as opposed to some races, these seem more like exceptions than the average. Orcs are very similar to the humans in terms of technology, being able to build ships, siege engines, weapons, armor and many other gadgets and war machines. Most of it is simple and rudimentary, although we have seen quite some advanced engineering. Usually the more complex stuff that the orcs have is built with the help of the goblins, but they do seem to be intelligent to very quickly catch up. For example, the Iron Horde was built in no time with literally no prior science or engineering experience. Orcs are rarely intellectuals and they're mainly focused on war, but when the time comes, they do have the intellect to back it up. Number 8. Trolls too many, trolls are seen as jungle savages and there is some merit to that. However, when you look at the entire troll history, you can see that they're not only one of the smartest races but also the most influential. Other, more intelligent races evolved from them and have shaped the world with their magic. Trolls are also excellent magic users, although not really the best in the world. However, much of their power comes from their technological advancements. Trolls have some of the most advanced architecture in Azeroth, and we have seen it all over Zandalar, Northrend, and even the Eastern Kingdoms. They can build pyramid-like buildings, elevators, weapons, massive walls, and other construction wonders. Their ships are also some of the best in the world, being able to compete and outmaneuver some of the most advanced designs. Science. Trolls may not be the most intelligent race, the best spellcasters or the engineers, but overall their intellect helped them survive essentially since the ordering of Azeroth up to this day. Number 7. Dwarves one of the most notable engineering races on all of Azeroth. While they aren't as intelligent or masterful as the gnomes, they are well known. However, on the other side, they're one of the weaker races when it comes to magic and there are very few notable dwarven spellcasters all throughout history. Still, when it comes to smithing, architecture, metalworking and mechanical engineering, they are near the top of the list. To many, them focusing on digging and building may seem like a mindless activity, but Iron Forge itself is a massive work of art that required a lot of intelligence. They managed to dig into the mountain, create a housing system, forges, all the various statues, as well as defense. We have seen them use various advanced machinery, notably the Dwarven Siege Engine. However, most of those were only built and manned by the dwarves, but were in fact designed by the gnomes. Other than that, there are many intellectuals in the dwarven ranks, particularly archaeologists and historians that discovered much of the heritage and chronicled a large chunk of the history of Azeroth. Number 6. Humans Humans are one of the leading races when it comes to magic. 
It is actually amazing as they are one of the shortest lived mage races but during their lifetimes they can become insanely powerful. When you look at the list of the most powerful spellcasters, humans take up a majority of the spots. You have characters like Khadgar, Jaina, Antonidas, Aegwin, Medivh and the list just goes on and on. We have also seen human advancements in science, they have archaeologists, historians and various other intellectuals. When it comes to engineering, they are one of the more significant races although they they aren't close to the gnomes or the dwarves. We've seen them build cannons, siege towers, cities, complex architecture and all sorts of machinery although a bulk of it is rudimentary and not nearly as complex as something built by the gnomes. While humans may not be the most intelligent race, when looking at their magic, technology and history, they are amongst the smartest. Number 5. Forsaken even though further on the list, Forsaken aren't really more intelligent than the humans but the reason they take this spot is the advancements they made in a relatively short period of time. They are one of the youngest races on the planet although their intelligence is inherited from their previous form. While they can lose their mind to undeath, they generally retain their intellect and become even smarter by furthering their rationality and suppressing their emotions, also by altering their state through various treatments. What furthers Forsaken advancement is their lack of morals and the ability to do really anything, practicing every single form of forbidden magic which gives them great powers. They are the best necromancers, some of the best warlocks and even mages. They develop the plague, master biology, learning how to manipulate living forms, stitch beings together and essentially create new life. They also seem to be proficient in engineering and architecture, building advanced war machines and various settlements. At the same time, some of the best alchemists and scientists are undead which is quite an achievement for a race so recently created. Number 4. Elves now, in order to make this list concise, I'm bundling all of the elves in one category and in my opinion, many of them are of quite similar intelligence. However, they are a very diverse race. Descending from the trolls, there are night elves, highborn, high elves, blood elves, void elves and the nightborn. From them there are even more variations like the Naga. They are however most of similar intelligence which is evident by their combined technology. From all of these the Night Elves seem like the least intelligent and that is because all of the others come from the Highborn which were a cast of Night Elves that had unusual intelligence therefore rising to the top of society. Elves really rule Azeroth when it comes to magic and it is they who taught many of the other races. Ashara is said to be the most powerful mage in existence of Azeroth and there are also many others such as Xavius, Elisande, Keltas, Romat and even Illidan the night elf that ultimately outsmarted the burning legion. Elves are really the best mages native to Azeroth and are masters of magic partly due to their inborn intelligence and partly due to their very long lifespan which allows them to retain significant more information than other races. Elves also dominate in practically every other discipline. Architecture, they have some of the most sophisticated and complex buildings ever seen. Science, they dominate most fields as science is very closely linked to magic in the world of Azeroth. When it comes to war machinery, they are also very powerful although engineering isn't really the strong suit of the elves. This is mainly because a lot of their creations are powered up by magic and designed with magic in mind so most mechanical advancements aren't really necessary. Overall, elves with their variations, specifically descendants of the highborn, are one of the most intelligent races on Azeroth. Number 3. Goblins one of the smartest races of the Horde and really the only reason the Horde managed to catch up to the Alliance in many technological aspects. Originally they were a very primitive race, however as they consumed Kajamite they became smarter. They lost their supply and intelligence and thus were enslaved by the Zandalari, however upon finding it again they managed to liberate themselves. Since then they have been mainly a neutral faction profiting of both sides of the war, however some factions joined and worked with the Horde. They are really the best engineers on Azeroth right next to the gnomes as they built many very advanced machines. They have zeppelins, shredders, rockets, airplanes, submarines and various other bits of technology. In particular, goblins focus on mechanical engineering, alchemy and explosives. However, they are also very well versed in architecture, building entire towns and orchestrating the construction of Orgrimmar. Other than that, we have also seen them create towns in a box that are built almost instantly. The biggest problem with the goblins though is that much
much of their technology is unreliable, which is due to their disorganization and in many cases greed and lack of cooperation. However, recently they have really upped their game and created remarkable pieces of technology. Outside of engineering, goblins have scientists, intellectuals, as well as economists. They're considered to be the richest race, although not sure how much of that can be contributed to intelligence and how much to just greed. Number 2. Gnomes the engineering master race. Gnomish culture is the most technologically focused and they're taught IQ-wise to be one of the smartest races on Azeroth. Gnomes are very specific in the sense that they are a society of rational, forward-thinking beings focusing on progress and giving little thought to petty warmongering or even history itself. While of course not perfect, they do make on average best engineers in the world. What separates them from the goblins is that they generally build very sturdy and high quality equipment. The reason for this is their analytical mind and the fact that they can spend more time planning a project than they actually spend creating it. While usually a positive thing, this can also be a weakness. However, in the case of progress, this turned them into the engineering race as they constantly analyze and improve their designs, while a goblin would usually just get bored and go over to another project. This led to the creation of the almost world wonder of Azeroth, the Deep Run Trend. However, gnomes have built everything from mechanic birds to weapons to tanks to submarines to bombs and everything in between. When it comes to magic, they're also very good spellcasters, utilizing the same intelligence and engineering mindset towards it. We've seen some very powerful gnome wizards. They have also made progress in all fields of science, making excellent intellectuals. So gnomes really are one of the smartest races on Azeroth. And lastly, number one, Draenei. Really one of the smartest races in the entire universe. Once Eredar, they were sought out by Sargeras himself as he needed intelligent beings that would rule over his demonic army. Seeing that Sargenas scoured the entire cosmos back and forth, there must be a good reason he decided to search for the Eredar specifically and to recruit them. Even 25,000 years ago, they were a highly advanced race in terms of magic, science, technology and even art. This means that Draenei are one of the oldest and the oldest living playable race seemingly, meaning that they can spend thousands of years seeking knowledge and seeing that they just arrived to Azeroth, they have earned more experience throughout their travels than all races combined. Draenei make excellent spellcasters as well as servants of the light, probably the best in the world and one of the best in the entire universe. While they don't really build gadgets and weaponry similar to the gnomes, they are on an even more advanced level. Utilizing nanotechnology and learning from it, they travel with dimensional ships throughout the cosmos. They have also mastered the art of shaping crystals, using it for almost everything from power containment to data storage. They create very complex architecture, enhancing it with magic, probably the most advanced out of all of the other races. Draenei are also highly focused on science and all of its disciplines, learning much throughout their travels. So ultimately, in my opinion, the Draenei are the most intelligent, playable race in world of Warcraft. That is on the races, but now let us focus on which of the playable classes are the strongest in the lore. Top 10 strongest lore classes in World of Warcraft. Listing the most powerful classes, focusing mainly on the playable ones. Do keep in mind that these are just my own opinions and observations based on destruction and that the list is not very strict. Power is a very subjective thing and just because one class is higher, it doesn't mean that it would be able to easily deal with others. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10. Hunters. Hunters are one of the most versatile classes that we know. Technically, a person with a ranged weapon and a pet is considered a hunter, but there are so many possible options out there. They can use bows, crossbows, rifles, melee weapons. They can have one or multiple pets of various kinds. So you have a rifleman, a beastmaster, a survivalist, all really bundled under one single class. So it is really hard to put hunters in a mold, but overall the mixture of their abilities can prove to be very, very practical 
tactical, they can use traps to surprise their foes and use range, especially with rifles, to kill their enemies before they even know what hit them. On top of this, the connection hunters have with beasts is a tremendous advantage, multiplying their power by a significant margin. Although their biggest weakness is melee, as once they lose the range, they pretty much lose their leverage. However, certain hunters do specialize in melee combat and with powerful beasts at their side, they can even best the strongest warriors. So overall, even though the term hunter is very loose, as a class depending on the specialization, they can prove to be very, very powerful. Number 9. Monks as masters of barehanded combat, the monks are one of the most unique classes out there. The original and pretty much the only ones until recently were the Pandaren. Thousands of years ago they were enslaved by the Mogu and as they were forbidden to use weapons, they had to rely on their fists and inner energy. Surprisingly enough, by mastering the so-called Chi, common people became much more powerful than regular warriors. By harnessing this mysterious energy, they were able to empower themselves significantly from absorbing incoming blows to making their fists as hard as steel the monks became a force to be reckoned with on top of this they could also balance the chi in others taking the roles of healers as well as crafting powerful brews to aid them and their allies in combat the monks freed the Pandaren, created a new society, and helped preserve it for thousands of years. Today, most races are learning this new art, and without a doubt, the monks are going to be crucial in the battles to come. Number 8. Shamans Shamans are spiritual guides and mediators of the elements. Even though they aren't necessarily a combat class, they can still become very powerful. Their abilities range from healing to causing serious destruction. Shamans can hold down thunderstorms, unleash bolts of lightning, torrents of lava, spikes from earth, even going as far as collapsing parts of mountains. In a way, their abilities are endless as they're all dependent on the environment and the elements around them. This is both a good and a bad thing at the same time. The good side is that the shamans can turn the very land against their opponents, but the bad side is that they don't have much control over their own power. The point of a shaman is to help the elements, and in return the elements help them. Essentially, it is a relationship of mutual respect and trust and just bartering for favors. This means that shamans can't abuse their powers, and if they do, they will get abandoned pretty much becoming completely useless. On the other side, there are the so-called dark shamans who enslave and extort the elements, becoming incredibly powerful. Generally, this practice almost always backfires, but when it does last, the dark shamans are a serious force to be dealt with, so all in all, both the regular and the dark shaman are one of the strongest classes in the universe. Number 7. Druids as guardians of nature and protectors of life, the druids are one of the most important classes on Azeroth. They harness the raw energy of nature, using it for both offensive and defensive purposes. In the history of the world, the druids played a very important role and heavily influenced its development. In fact, it was druidism that helped defeat the Burning Legion two times, as well as preserve the nature to this day. Much like the shaman, the druids have nearly endless abilities, all very dependent on the environment, they can heal and snare, create cyclones, turn forests against their enemies, along with many other powers. On top of this, they can also shapeshift into a large variety of animals, morphing into bears, cats, birds, all dependent on the situation. However, their biggest weakness is their reliance on the environment, meaning that while extremely powerful in a forest, a druid would be next to useless in a completely dead wasteland. Nevertheless, their big variety of abilities does make them one of the strongest classes out there. Number 6. Paladins 
all across the universe, there are servants of light. Most notable that we know would be the Draenei. However, on Azeroth, the Paladins are a very recent addition. Some 30 years ago when the orcs invaded, the priests proved to be ineffective in combat and for this reason, the first Paladin Order was formed. Mixing the martial prowess of a warrior with the abilities of a priest, they became a very powerful weapon. From the humans, the paladins did spread to other Azeroth races and they are all at the core very similar, except the Tauren who are more sandroids than light warriors. Regardless of the differences, the paladins are a powerful class and from the defeat of the orcs to the defeat of the Lich King, they had a significant role in history. Their abilities range from healing, creating shields, up to casting the light offensively in order to smite their foes. They are very much capable of fighting against most other classes, some easier than the others as the light proves to be very powerful and effective. Paladins were crucial in saving the world recently and today with a legion threat they will no doubt be of great use once again. Number 5 Death Knights even though there are technically three generations, right now I'm mainly referring to the most recent one, Death Knights are a very unique class and a very powerful one as well. They were raised from fallen champions by the Lich King for the purpose of serving the Scourge. Stripped of emotion, Death Knights are undead killing machines that utilize melee combat combined with rune magic. When it comes to just melee, they are much stronger than they were in their previous life as Aunt Death has granted them increased strength, endless stamina and a serious resistance to pain. However, their biggest power is rune magic and even though they are not really casters, their limited use of magic greatly boosts their efficiency. Death Knights can boil the blood of their enemies, suffocate, freeze, as well as control lesser undead. On top of this, they have great defensive capabilities as they are able to wear Serenite armor that very few people can and create anti-magic shields which grants them serious protection against incoming spells. Overall, Death Knights are much more powerful than a regular warrior but their biggest weakness is that even though they do utilize the magic, they their use is very limited and they aren't necessarily as powerful as a necromancer would be or any other serious spellcaster. Nevertheless, the Death Knights are one of the most powerful classes and are able to go toe to toe with almost any other class. Number 4 Shadow Priests even though priests lore-wise, shadow priests are completely different from the holy ones, shadow priests control void energy which is one of the strongest if not the strongest energy in the universe as it is the direct opposite of the light. Even though today they are decently widespread, their practice is still quite a mystery. They tap into the void and in order to truly understand the void and harness its power, you need to be driven completely completely mad. As counterintuitive as this might seem, these priests work on the brink of madness and abuse this potency for their own power gain. Through the void they can feed off their opponents minds, drive them to insanity and empower themselves. On top of this they can also call upon the creatures of the void to serve them in battle. However, their biggest weakness is that even though they do tap into such a powerful and dark energy, their potential is very much limited. Regardless, even with the space they have to work around with, Shadow Priests are a serious force to be reckoned with. Number 3 Mages Mages are one of the most influential classes in the history of Azeroth. Initially, most of them were the Highborn and later on the High Elves, but in the recent time the practice has spread to almost all other races. Almost anyone can become a mage, but very few take on this road of hard work and dedication. 
Through formidable efforts, students learn to control the powerful energy that is arcane, which they can use for various purposes. Mages learn many different schools, all consisting of a different variety of spells, and they can also combine them into spells of much greater power. A mage can be effective both offensively and defensively, they can turn their enemies into dust, destroy their weapons, polymorph, while also being able to create magic shields and other different types of blocks and barriers. On top of this, a mage can teleport, which is not only practical, but also useful in both avoiding combat, escaping combat, and just having a general edge in a duel. However, their biggest weakness is obviously melee, and unless they blink fast enough or destroy the enemy before they can reach them, they can be in serious trouble. Also, even though mages do control one of the strongest energies in the entire universe, they can't really reach anywhere close to the true potential, even with a powerful enough magic source. Nevertheless, mages are still one of the strongest classes currently available. Number 2. Demon Hunters Demon Hunters are an ancient concept, but only a very recently widespread class. Almost all of the Demon Hunters today were trained by Illidan for the purpose of defeating the Legion some 10 years ago. Through their brutal ritual, these Night Elves and Blood Elves were transformed into a weapon. Instead of tapping into the demonic powers, they embraced the demon by literally devouring him, becoming part demons themselves. This sacrifice is great and their previous lives are completely gone, but in return, those few that manage to survive this process receive superhuman powers. Demon Hunters are insanely fast and agile, while also being incredibly strong for their size. Their biggest achievement was invading the homeworld of the Dreadlords, as well as the demonic base of Mardum. Trained to fight demons, they can defeat even the most powerful ones that others wouldn't even be able able to get close to. However, this can also be their weakness, as while they do exist to combat the Burning Legion, they're not specialized against other classes. Regardless, their superhuman abilities grant them an incredible edge, being able to outmaneuver almost any melee fighter, as well as strike a spellcaster before he could even cast a spell. In game, the Demon Hunters are quite different from the lore, but lore-wise, they are very few in numbers and are an elite group of very powerful individuals. Number 1. Warlocks Warlocks are the most powerful and volatile of all spellcasters. Where others have put a limit, Warlocks have passed it for the sake of power. Of course, there are obviously consequences, and Warlocks have gone through serious sacrifices. However, in return, they controlled one of the strongest forces in the universe, Fell Magic and the Void. Of course, the playable Warlocks have a line they wouldn't cross for their own safety and sanity, but it is not rare that they descend into madness after they start abusing their power. The strongest Warlocks are those of the Burning Legion that are bathed in fell energy, but the mortal ones that fight for a good cause can still be very powerful on their own. Generally, they don't descend into fell or bathe in the void, but instead they manipulate it and try to leverage the damage and the risk scale. They can summon powerful creatures, harvest the souls of their enemies, drive them insane, and create spells of significant destructive potential. Although their weakness is that they can overextend themselves and lose control when tinkering with these dark energies. However, even when in the safe zone, they can still do a lot of damage. Warlocks are spellcasters that are not afraid to sacrifice everything and have no end to their own growth, and for this reason, they are the most powerful class in Warcraft. So now that we had gone over the playable side as mere mortals and our abilities, let us take a look at the cosmological players, the big guys of the Warcraft universe. Top 10 Strongest Characters in World of Warcraft Version 2 Looking at outworldly beings and races that are so strong that mortals can't even get their minds around 
their power. Number 10, Dreadlords. I know you may be thinking, wow, Dreadlords, really? They're just like regular mobs. Sure, they may be strong, but they're nowhere near the levels of the Titans. And you're right, just raw power-wise, they are essentially meaningless. However, big spoiler alert for Shadowlands, these guys are insane and have been manipulating literally the entire universe. Now, nothing is 100% confirmed, but with just this information that we do have, it turns out that they actually originate from the Shadowlands. So far, we've known them as demons, servants of the Legion, but they were pretending all along it was the Dreadlords that let get us to create the Burning Legion, it was the Dreadlords that ultimately led to the destruction of the Titans, and it was the Dreadlords that led to the war between the Void and the Legion. The most famous line of theirs is the cunning ones kneel before six masters but serve only one. From what we have data mined, these guys pretended to be demons by taking the fell. Most recently, they even pretended to join the light with Atraxian, and they have infiltrated literally everything from the Burnic Legion to the Scarlet Crusade. They even created the Lich King and got Kill Jaden to do the work. So, individually, power wise, they're nowhere near this list, but their power comes from their intellect and just sheer manipulation skills. Dread Lords literally played, well, almost everyone on this list, beings that are a thousand times more powerful and led some of them to absolute destruction. So if that doesn't make the Dreadlords one of the strongest races in all the universe, I really don't know what does. Number 9. Old Gods Old Gods, also known as the biggest disappointment in all of Warcraft history. If I was to make a list 10 years ago, I'd probably place these guys around the first or the second place, but now I was debating to even include them on this list. So their lore has changed drastically over the years, but the new information still kinda stands. The Void Lords sent out a bunch of these creatures, flung them across the universe in order to corrupt planets and turn them to the Void. Most of them were a miss, but some um, did hit the mark as the ultimate goal was to corrupt nascent world souls and to turn them into the servants of the void. Probably the most important old gods were the ones on Azeroth due to the insane power of our actual world soul. Initially they ruled the planet with their black empire, were imprisoned by the titans and apparently they posed the biggest threat to the planet for many millennia. That threat turned out to be essentially useless as we've pretty much defeated all of them. Of course, this isn't 100% confirmed, but most recently we did fight Nazoth, and from what we know, he is deceased. Now, despite not being the strongest beings in the universe and a relatively minor villain, they are nonetheless still quite powerful. These guys literally controlled all of Azeroth for a period, corrupted Deathwing, created the Naga, and overall just caused a whole lot of chaos for our small planet. Number 8. Naru. The Naru are one of the most mysterious beings in all the universe, but also the ones that we've had a lot of contact with. There are many times that we have seen the Naru, and we've learned that not all of them are actually good, and that they all have their own motives. In regards to their creation, when the universe was born with the clash of the light and the void, the shards of the fractured light gathered and the Naru emerged from them. With this theory, they may be one of the oldest beings in all the universe, as they're essentially pure light, the light of creation. While before we believed that the light was all sunshine and rainbows, recently we have seen that they are just extremely dedicated to their cause and their side of the cosmology chart and that they will walk over anyone that tries to stop them from reaching their goals. So far we have seen multiple named Naru and one of them was even used to empower the Sunrail and to ultimately restart it. Additionally there are also such things as the Prime Naru, the Elder Naru and so far we have had contact with one, Xera. She is said to be one of the first ones ever created and there is even a theory going around that she could be created by Loon but we'll talk about that a bit later on down this list. Xera was defeated by Illidan as she tried to imprison him and force him to do what he didn't want to do which no doubt makes the Naru seem weak as she should literally be the strongest of the Naru but she was defeated by Illidan. However, my thought is that the Naru themselves are not powerhouses as Sergeira Suri for example, but more as guiding lights, a guiding light of armies that could end up being capable of conquering the entire universe. Number 7. Argus the Unmaker 
it is pretty safe to say that thus far this was the toughest opponent that we have actually faced in all of World of Warcraft. Much like Azeroth, Argus is a world soul, the Emerald Star, and the nascent titan of the Argus planet. Unfortunately for him, the Legion found him first and then literally turned the titan into probably the most powerful engine in all of the cosmos. Sergeras used Argus to power up the entire army of the Burning Legion and in order to allow them to respawn endlessly in the Twisting Nether. Argus was essentially what made the Burning Legion invincible. This was literally a titan that was yet to be born that had all of his energy siphoned in order to power up an endless number of demons. If he managed to empower an entire Burning Legion army, his power had to be absolutely insane. Ultimately, as Argus was tortured, a tortured spirit, and he was non-stop used as the source, we did manage to defeat him. However, the last bit of his power was used in order to imprison Sir Geras. Now, just this bit alone is crucial, as literally the last remnant of Argus managed to imprison one of the most powerful entities that ever existed in the history of the universe. Number 6. Titans much like the Naru, the Titans are also one of the first beings ever created, born from primordial matter that founded the very universe that we have. They are walking planets, like in the literal sense. Occasionally, certain planets have a nascent Titan in their core, and if given the right environment and if protected, it can blossom into the colossal Titans. At one point, with enough of them awakened, the Pantheon was created, and as far as we know, they were possibly the most powerful beings that were ever walking around. They essentially had one goal, to order the world in their image and to search for new titans and to awaken them. The titans created most of life on both Azeroth and Draenor and no doubt many other worlds and they also battled the chaotic forces in the universe. Eventually, one of them, Sergeras, the most powerful one, rebelled and essentially defeated all of them as he was infused with fell energy. However, their spirit remained and a fraction of them floated about for millennia and millennia, only for them to be freed and ultimately to imprison the rebellious Brother. Still, it is not like they were fully resurrected as they tell us to protect the last remaining titan, which is Azeroth. Now, the power level of the titans shifted a bit over the years. Initially, we believed them to be these insane godlike beings that we couldn't even put our minds around. Like, literally, the wall of eternity, this insane fount of power was just a small wound of a titan, not even born yet. And one of the titans popped out one of the old gods, just like a pimple. So, they're still insanely powerful, but now we've learned about the other forces in the universe, and the titan pantheon may not be as colossal as we once thought. Number 5. The Eternal Ones the pantheon of death and the most recent addition to the Warcraft lore. Currently, we know of six of them and they're all leaders of their own realms of the afterlife. The most notable one is obviously the Jailer or the Banished One and he is said to be the most powerful out of all of them. The reality is that as Shadowlands isn't released at this point, we know very little about who they actually are, what is their origin, what is their exact purpose, but we know that they literally control the afterlife, which makes them just insanely powerful. Most of the other forces affect life, but who who even cares about a short mortal life when you have control over the afterlife for all eternity? In terms of power levels, it is right now just hard to speculate where they are exactly. Blizzard confirmed that they are similar to the Pantheon, the Titan ones, and their power is Titan-like. However, spoiler alert, we face off one of them in a raid, as far as we know, right as the expansion starts. But on the other hand, the Jailer or Zowal was said to not just be a Titan level antagonist, but on a Titan plus plus level. This means that he is more powerful than the Titans. As we don't know how the Shadowlands works exactly, this might mean that they just possess endless power within the realms, and it is hard to speculate how the actual Titans would interact with them, but as the expansion is released, we'll get to find out. Number 4. Void Lords so far, we see the Void Lords as the true villains of the universe. We first learned about them years ago in the Chronicle, and we're yet to actually see them or get much more information about them. Just as the Titans and the Naru were created, so was the Void and the Void Lords, and they're the most powerful entities composed of pure shadow energy ruling over the Void. Cruel and merciless beyond imagination, they're literally chaos incarnate. They're said to be outside of the borders of reality in their own realm without the ability to manifest themselves. However, that doesn't really mean that they are not able to reach us. Demencius, the old devouring, was one that managed to 
manifest himself at least a little bit and to destroy the homeworld of the Tyrells, Karnash. Vordors have also been working since forever to corrupt titans and to create new weapons of destruction, which is why they created the old gods to do their bidding. Interestingly enough, not all of them have this one unique goal and they may actually have their own personalities, goals and aspirations, sort of similar to the old gods, which makes a lot of sense of course because the old gods are like tiny manifestations of the all-powerful Void Lords. We are yet to actually see them and honestly I'm expecting the Void to show up either in the Shadowlands or the expansion after. Really, they're the only incredibly powerful villain that we never saw or faced off and honestly I think that they are the future of World of Warcraft. Number 3. Sargeras the Dark Titan, the Lord of the Burning Legion, and the biggest villain of the Warcraft universe. Well, at least until Blizzard figured out that there were even better villains out there. Sargeras used to be a Titan, and with the recent lore, we know that the Dreadlords corrupted him. See, Titans are native to order, and all the Dreadlords had to do was just present a vision of their exact opposite, this order, and this by itself would just drive them insane. Sargeras set his sight on the Burning Crusade in order to recreate the universe from scratch due to this inherent void flaw. With the new Shadowlands lore, he might have even known something else we don't know yet, but I digress. Sargeras was, I'd say, the most powerful being that we have ever known and not just heard about but actually faced off. Long ago, he cleaved a planet in two with his sword and he managed to summon another gigantic sword and to stab Azeroth, almost destroying our planet. He was ultimately imprisoned but only with the help of a nasty world soul, a titan, so it took the combined energy of all the remaining titans and Argus in order to imprison the rebellious brother. Still, out of all of these to the list, in terms of raw power, Sargeras is definitely top. He was incredibly powerful, just as a titan, without anything else, but as he was empowered by Fel and he gathered all these races and energies, he got even stronger. Why he was defeated with relative ease is honestly up for lore and consistency, but I do believe that he is the baddest villain that we have ever faced off against. Number 2. Azeroth The last remaining titan and the most important world soul in the entire universe. People usually wonder why is Azeroth so special, why do all these villains constantly attack us, why do we constantly have these godly forces meddling non-stop attempting to destroy us and to make our life worse. The world soul is the answer. Azeroth was discovered quite late by the Titan Pantheon, but they saw insane power potential in her. All of them believed that if she awakened, she would be more powerful than the strongest Titans Sargeras, and that Azeroth herself would be able to overthrow their arch enemies, the Void Lords. Now, it was this power that made Azeroth the number one target in the cosmos, but it is also this power that kept her alive and not destroyed like most other planets. Literally everyone discovered her potential, all gods immediately clung and attempted to take control and to turn her into a void weapon, the titans freed her, and as Sargeras created his burning legion, he was scared of her the most and he saw Azeroth as his number one threat. His reasoning was that he needed to destroy the nascent titan before the void lords get to her first and to turn it against him. So essentially, Azeroth has been the battleground for all the powerful cosmic forces in the entire universe. Most recently, Azeroth was stabbed and barely survived, and her destiny is yet to unravel. However, before we even get into the Shadowlands, we know that the Jailer has set his sights on our world soul, and already he said that death is coming for her. So, the Jailer is just another villain in the queue. What will happen, we'll have to see in the upcoming expansions, who will face off, and how much power Azeroth still has within her. There is no doubt that if she awakens in her full power, there might not be a single force in the universe capable of stopping her. And lastly, number one, the first ones. Currently the most mysterious force in the entire universe, we've only just learned about them and Blizzard confirmed that we will know more as Shadowlands unravels. Previously I mentioned the Eternal Ones, which are something similar to the Titans, however the beings of the Shadowlands mentioned the first ones and they seem to be like the closest thing that we have to actual creators or gods. Blizzard confirmed that they are tied to other pantheons like the Titans and the Pantheon of Death, the Eternal Ones. 
Gods. It is thought it existed before the universe was ordered into what it is and all these powerful beings were brought to life and that maybe they were the ones that even created all of them in the first place. There is also currently a theory going around that maybe Elune could be a first one and we have seen her tap into almost every force across the cosmology chart. It is definitely bold of me to place them first on this list with like two sentences that we've known about them but I am taking a gamble on my part. However, I am expecting the first ones if for nothing just their name to be above everyone else on this list. Now the big guys of course need their armies in order to accomplish their goals, they have created a bunch of terrible beings, horrific and dangerous. So let us start with the oldest of them and the most horrible old god creations. Top 10 most horrific old god creations in World of Warcraft covering all sorts of old god monstrosities and minions that we have seen throughout history. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10. Faceless Ones Known as the Enraki, they are one of the most common old god minions, a monstrous race that arose from the organic matter that seeped through the old gods forums before the titans even arrived. They were a pillar to the Black Empire and were usually taskmasters that employed the Akir to build the shrines and temples of the massive empire. When the titan forged conquered Azeroth, most of them were imprisoned alongside their masters. However, thousands of years later they would start to re-emerge. First when the Nerubians started to dig too deep and now with the recent old god influences. We have seen them anywhere from Northrend to Kul Tiras, Zandalar and the Emerald Nightmare. The faceless ones are powerful creatures with no recognizable faces and usually have one arm larger than the other appearing mesh shapen to mortals. They speak the language of the old gods Shatyar that no other Azrothian race can understand and the communication is usually translated through telephatic whispers. Scary, versatile beings that have only one goal to serve their masters. Number 9. Merciless Ones Commonly known as zoatroids, they are creepy aquatic creatures primarily found underwater. They are octopus-like and have only one eye. The main power of the merciless ones is their parasitic nature. They are capable of attaching themselves to the heads of sapient beings and enslaving them, completely controlling their minds and their thoughts. Often referred to as demon squids, although having no real connection with demons, it's just that they are so horrific. We've We've seen them on the Broken Isles, Kul Tiras, Vashir and other zones. Not the most powerful, but horrifying and creepy creatures. Number 8. Nerubians after the war with the trolls, the Akira split. Nerubians were a portion of the old god servants that ventured north, eventually settling in Northrend. There they overthrew the Tolver society and became really the most influential force on the continent. They were fabled for their architecture intelligence and had developed a sophisticated and highly risen society. Thousands of years later, the Lich King would seek to extend his influence over Northrend and these old god creations stood in his way. A massive war began known as the War of the Spider and due to their resistance to the plague it was a long war won only by attrition. After the defeat of the Lich King a small portion would begin to repopulate but the Nerubians would never reach their former glory. As a part of the Scourge, they were one of the most useful members and much of their architecture was adopted by the Scourge. Nerubians are brilliant builders, spellcasters as well as warriors. Number 7. Hydras while not proven to have been created by the old gods directly, we do know for a fact that some of them serve the old gods and are their favorite pets. Their appearance is that of old god creations, but it is entirely possible that they were just native beasts that were favored by the old gods or were possibly warped by them. Nonetheless, they are very scary creatures, usually intelligent and possessing multiple hands. They are very difficult to kill as their wounds heal very quickly and when fatally wounded, they can 
split into multiple smaller hydras. They can be small monsters or massive monstrosities and are known to be ruthless. Each of their heads appears to display a level of independent behavior. Akumai of Black Fathom Deeps was known to possess old gun power and was worshipped with the Twilight's Hammer as a divine sign. Number 6. Kiraji The Kiraji are part of the Akir, the group that ventured south after the split. Their main concentration was around Silithus, but most importantly around the prison of Khatun, their master. They would spend thousands of years building an army capable of reforming the Black Empire and reawakening the Old God. The most notable encounter was the War of the Shifting Sands some thousand years ago, which was a massive battle between the Kiraji and the Night Elves and the Dragons. The Druids had awoken them as they attempted to transform Silithus, starting the war that ended with heavy casualties on both sides and ultimately the Kiraji threat being stopped behind a wall. However, almost a millennia later, this wall would break as the gates of Ankiraj were shattered. The might of Kalimdor fought a bloody battle, but managed to contain the threat. While they have been nearly but destroyed, they still remain out there. Kiraji can be seen in various forms, from gladiators to prophets and emperors, wielding heavy weapons, flying or swarming their enemies with bugs. Number 5. Naga the most notable of the old god creations. These serpentine beings were once highborn, masters of sorcery and followers of Queen Ashara. When the planet was sundered, they together with the ruler fell into the ocean and as a last resort, Ashara accepted Nezod's offer to be transformed into the Naga. Interestingly enough, unlike most creations, Ashara became a queen and not just a minion of the old gods and since then they have been building a civilization on the ocean floor. Very little was known of them for thousands of years, but within the last 20 we have seen them constantly through smaller and bigger insurgencies as well as campaigns. Currently they are participating in the battle for Azeroth, attacking the coastlines of Zandalar and Kul Tiras. Queen Ashara will be the final boss in 8.2 within Nazatar, the capital city of the Naga, located in the middle of the Great Sea. Not much is known yet of the fate of the Naga, but we do know that they're one of the most numerous and most influential of the old god creations. Number 4. Mantid As the Nerubians went north and the Kiraji south, the Mantid would go even further south. There they reached the lands of Pandaria where they had established an empire of their own. The Mantid had worshipped Yasharaj since the days of old and had sworn to serve him again if he was ever to return. They mainly settled in the dread wastes and due to their ferocity a wall had to be built splitting Pandaria from them. They would swarm the wall in regular waves, however, in Mists of Pandaria, it happened sooner due to the Shao fear. When Garrosh absorbed the heart of Yasharaj, they allied with the War Chief, but after the defeat, much of their empire was brought to ruin. However, today they have a new Grand Empress and their future is uncertain. The Mantid are very intelligent beings, capable of sophisticated architecture, weapon production as well as magic. Very loyal to their queen but ultimately loyal to the old gods. Number 3. Sha. Although technically not created by the old gods themselves, they are of old god origin. When Yasharaj was ripped out of Azeroth by Amantol, the remains fell upon the land of Pandaria and from them the mysterious entity known as the Sha would spawn. They would manifest themselves in relation to negative emotions, feeding upon them and growing stronger. Due to their Pandaren culture, peaceful nature and practice, they had kept them under control for thousands of years with minor outbreaks here and there. Once the forces of Azeroth reached Pandaria, all would change. Unwary mortals became possessed by the negative Sha energy as they had battled each other. Once Garrosh absorbed the essence of Yasharaj, the Sha would eventually start to fade from existence, but they still remain to this day. They are shadowy, spirit-like creatures that can grow stronger based on how negative the emotion is and the actual intensity and can also infest the land. 
while they were defeated, having creatures that spawn based on emotions that can't be really controlled is pretty scary. Number 2. Catraxi the Catrax are one of the strongest old god creations ever made. While they're considered to be faceless ones, they're significantly more powerful and resilient. These monstrous warbringers are generals of the old god forces and so far we have only seen or heard about 10 of them. Two of the most notable were Kirix and Zakaz, the ones that hunted the titanic watcher Tyr. They are extremely powerful, having killed a titanic watcher through a days long battle. Worst of all, after their death, they don't really die, but they slowly regain their energy and return to life. This already happened once when the trolls had awakened the Catrax, which started a massive troll Akir war. Recently, we have seen Metrax and Zandalar that destroyed the last of the three seals, freeing Gahun. Catraxi are believed by many to be the most powerful of the old god creation. And lastly, number 1, Forgotten Ones. Massive, mysterious entities with very little backstory. The only confirmed encounter was in Warcraft 3 when Artis and Anubarek had healed one in Azul Neru. However, a few other creations are speculated to also be Forgotten Ones, such as the monstrosities in the Twilight Highlands in the Hour of Twilight. They are massive creatures and look a lot like how you'd expect an old god to appear in their released forms. They command the faceless ones and are able to summon tentacles and other creations. Very little is known about them, but many speculate that they are just a few steps below the old gods and are thought to be the most powerful minions. Many believe that Ilgenot was a forgotten one, although it was never confirmed. While all gods are powerful, the Legion was the army of the Warcraft universe and their creations are literally out of this world, so let's look at the most horrific demons we had encountered. Top 10 Most Horrific Demons in the World of Warcraft Covering some of the scariest and most powerful demonic creations in the game. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10 Shivara. Horrific creatures that we first ever encountered in Outland. The Shivara or Shivan are six armed female demons averaging 20 to 30 feet in height, which is around 8 meters. Very little is known about them aside from the fact that they're scary, that they wield a ton of weapons and are extremely powerful. These priestesses only live to evangelize the power of Sargeras' burning crusade and are known to be more fanatical than pretty much any other demon out there. Definitely not someone you'd want to do battle with. Number 9. Orzal the creepiest on this list, Urzal are creatures formed from tormented bodies and souls of the fallen members of the Army of the Light. They seem to be dog-like creatures with multiple Eredar heads and a mouth. Aside from the Army of the Light, there is also a spell that steals the souls of the broken Draenei and creates new Urzal. These creatures look more like something that the Lich King would create as opposed to Sargeras, but it is important to remember that even the Lich King and the Scourge were actually created by the Burning Legion. Nonetheless, Orzal are eerie beings. Number 8. Felguards The iconic footmen of the Burning Legion, Felguards are one of the more common yet very powerful demon units. They are strong physically and they almost always wield heavy two-handed weapons. They're completely fearless and incredibly, if not almost mindlessly loyal to their masters. At around 8 feet or 240 centimeters, they are much larger than most mortals and are quite imposing. Half of their body is unarmored, while the other half is very heavily armored. Felgarads are actually a part of the influential Morg race and unlike most of their brethren, they didn't have their bodies changed by bionic parts. Fel Lords are the more evolved and more powerful version of the Felgarns. As one of the most common footmen, they were a crucial part of the Burning Legion structure. Number 7. Satyr 
the Satyr were once Night Elves. It all originated with Xavius, a highborn sorcerer that was very close to Ashara. Due to his failures during the War of the Ancients, he was destroyed and remade into a horrific demonic form. Subsequently, he would start spreading the curse to other Night Elves and even other races. When the Burning Legion was defeated, a large part of the surviving Satyr and Demons battled against the Night Elves in the event known as the War of the Satyr. They were almost completely destroyed by the newly formed Vorgan Druids. After that, they would live in the Dark Woods, mainly in the form of sects and were quite isolated. Still, they would never regain their former glory. The Satyr are very good at wielding magic and are physically powerful at the same time. Worst of all, they have the ability to spread their curse, which is how they remained relevant for over 10,000 years. Today, they are almost extinct, but are still feared as the demons haunting the woods. Number 6. Dreadlord the Natrazim are one of the most intelligent, sinister and dangerous members of the Burning Legion. They are vampire-like beings with powerful manipulation powers, mind control abilities and overall scary corpse-like appearance. They're almost on par with the Eredar when it comes to magic, making them one of the most powerful spellcasters in the entire universe. Since the formation of the Burning Legion, they have been the brains behind the demonic armies and are responsible for much of their success. Their abilities are incredibly scary, being able to turn worlds against each other, brother against brother and then turning the defeated armies into slaves. During the Third War, the Dreadlords were the jailers of the Lich King and were crucial in the newest invasion. Recently, Illidan had invaded their homeworld of Natreza, causing a cataclysmic explosion, obliterating a great part of it. As the Burning Legion was defeated, the Natrezim lost their power, but they still exist. Number 5 Fellhounds. The Fellhounds are probably the most notable Burning Legion cannon fodder and footmen. They are twisted animal-like creatures and are something between a wolf, a bug and a reptile and are incredibly fast and powerful for their size. They possess sharp teeth, horns, claws and a thick hide and some fur. Atop their back they have two long tentacles also used for combat. Fellhounds are often utilized by the Legion to sniff out sources of magic as they actually feed on it and they're especially fond of draining the life energies out of a spellcaster. For this reason, they're often referred to as Mana Stalkers or Fell Stalkers. As alien-like creatures, something from Starcraft as in the Zerg, they were very numerous and still exist to this day. Despite their small size, they are able to easily pick apart most humanoids and were heavily used by the Burning Legion. Number 4. Observers one of the creepier on this list, the Observers are literally a floating head. Native to the Twisting Nether, these demons contain two rows of teeth, seven eyes and ten tentacles. Observers can shoot magic beams through the eyes with different types of magic coming from each eye. Young Observers can only have a single eye and are generally less aggressive. They are one of the least loyal members of the Legion and it is even said that they are not even the members of the Burning Legion but they are just taking part because they are interested. They have a deep desire to witness magic and can see through stealth and invisibility. They vary in power from very powerful to only just regular minions. Still, they have proven to be quite the asset to the Burning Crusade. Number 3. Aranasi Demons that were only recently introduced in the game, but are seemingly very powerful and very high in the chain of command. The Aranasi are Arachnid demons, a mix between spiders and humanoids, standing on two legs with wings. Some speculate that they are remnants of a forgotten race on a world that the Burning Legion conquered many, many years ago. This could mean that they are either a native race that they recruited, but most likely they are a race that fought them, but was defeated and then twisted and corrupted to serve the Burning Legion. From what we have seen, they are agile, intelligent, can wield magic and some are even known to create poison. Scary creatures, nonetheless. 
Number 2 Doom Guards Known as the Eredruin, these demons are said to have been the titan's hounds and slaved to police the use of arcane magic. Sargeras would free them and make them one of the greatest assets of the newly formed Burning Legion. Doom Guards are massive creatures and extremely powerful. Not only are they huge, but they also have wings, meaning that they are humongous flying demons. They usually wield massive blazing swords and are heavily armored. There are different power levels to them, but some are known to be able to defeat entire armies with just their sheer strength. Aside from the physical aspect, they are very intelligent and are generally commanders and are utilized to lead troops into battle, having a clear view from the air. Devoted to their pit lord masters, they revel in the destruction of planets. And lastly, number 1. Pit Lords. The Anihilen, commonly known as Pit Lords, are one of the most powerful demons of the entire Burning Legion. They were native to the Twisting Nether and were demons before the Legion even became a thing. They are quite the opposite to Dreadlords as they are all about brute force. Kill Jaden recruited these monstrosities and since then they were always quite high in the chain of command. Most of the time they are generals and only come into battle when they can really make an impact, sometimes being used as living siege engines. These creatures were so powerful that one of them, Manrod, essentially started the entire orcish horde in the invasion of Azeroth as they drank his blood. They are massive, humongous, lizard-like creatures and usually wield a double-bladed pole. Most of them have been defeated so far, but these gigantic creations were literally one of the top demon races within the Burning Legion. Compared to demons, the undead are much weaker but in my opinion more horrific than both the demons and the old god creations, so let's take a look at what the Lich King was cooking. Top 10 Most Horrific Undead Creations in World of Warcraft covering some of the worst and most interesting types of undead in the game. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10. Geists as lower ranking undead forms, the Geists are one of the most iconic creatures from Wrath of the Lich King. Their exact origin is not completely certain, but we do know that at least a portion of them are criminals raised into undeath. This is evident by the bag over their head and the hangman's rope around their neck. Despite being gagged, they are capable of speech and are surprisingly agile and quick, even though their main movement is crawling. Geists are often used in manual labor as well as combat. Their movement and sharp claws makes them a considerable foe in battle. With the scary appearance of undead criminals and agility, the Geists are some of the more eerie beings of the Scourge. Number 9. Flesh Beasts Flesh Beasts are just a type of an abomination, albeit considerably more powerful. Not much is known about them and only a limited amount was ever constructed, mainly by Professor Pewterside. Much like the abominations, they are made of dead bodies, but based on their appearance, it looks like there is a lot more at play here. They most likely include remains of some type of giants, as well as possibly Vrykel and other humanoid and beast-like creatures. Unlike the abominations, which are mainly humanoid, the flesh beasts contain more than just one extra limb, they also have multiple mouths, eyes, as well as fangs. So overall, they're just a massive monstrosity of considerable power built from piles of all sorts of dead creatures that are not only strong, but also spread disease. Number 8. Undead Nerubians 
These old god creations were a large part of Northrend and one of the most significant influences over there for thousands of years. However, during the War of the Spider, the Lich King decided to finally take control over the continent. As they turned out to be immune to the Plague of Undeath, he had to win by attrition, which was a very difficult road. With the aid of the Dreadlords and a large number of undead, the Nerubians were defeated. While they were immune to the plague, they were able to be raised through necromancy. There are many different units and aside from their size and physical power, they brought a lot to the Scourge through magic and their architecture and the ability to dig deep underground. Nerubians, while different when compared to many of the undead and way more intelligent, were a crucial pillar of the Scourge army. Number 7 Abominations Crafted within the depths of Scholomans by the Cult of the Damned, the Abominations are horrific beings. Using multiple dead bodies, the Necromancers attached and stitched them together, creating these massive monstrosities. They utilized a relatively smart brain, but as the process resulted in brain damage, they became very, very limited. The end product is a dull-witted abomination spreading disease, wielding cleavers and other types of weaponry and overpowering most foes due to their abilities and strength. They are closest to ogres in terms of size and power, but a lot of their functions come from the fact that they are undead and that they spread disease very easily. So you have massive walking, talking piles of dead bodies contaminating everything around them. Extremely resilient and run by necromancy. So being even close to them is not advisable. Number 6. Plague Dogs there have only been a few of these as they were found quite late by the Scourge. The Black Dog, as their name suggests, are dog-like abominations which, even though extremely dangerous on their own, were seen as pets by other abominations, although some were standalone creatures. They seem to be formed entirely out of animal remains and, much like other abominations, are crafted from dead parts, stitched together in all sorts of ways and raised through necromancy to serve the Scourge. Definitely not the type of dog you would want to get. Number 5. Ghouls The official footmen of the Scourge mainly used as shock troops and just general cannon fodder. There are various versions of them, but almost all of them are made out of fallen humans that were raised by the Scourge. As most of their body had rotten away, their bones and facial features became twisted, making them almost unrecognizable as humans. As they progress into undeath more and more, they also gain claws and fangs, which turns them into formidable opponents. They are a bit different than just the raised undead and the Scourge Necromancers mainly utilize them as they had discovered the formula. Overall, they are just mindless zombies, although there have been examples where they manage to retain a bit of intelligence. They can speak, usually muttering, and they don't do much other than just follow orders from the higher ups. They're also cannibalistic and able to regenerate quickly by devouring friend and foe alike. One of the most iconic creatures in the Warcraft universe, the ghouls were mainly exterminated, even though they were once very high in numbers, although they still exist to this day. Number 4. Flesh Giants these are two different creations of the Scourge, but both are incredibly powerful. One is a cyborg type, while another is just an undead giant. These giants were created from storm giants, as well as other types of massive northern creatures. They are so powerful that they are literally used as living battering rams due to their tremendous brute strength. Not exactly very intelligent, but extremely powerful and deadly. Just a few of these giants alone could defeat entire armies, especially since they're so resilient as the undead. Their spinal fluid also interacts with the plague, turning it into corrosive acid. So we are only lucky that the Lich King didn't get stronger and employ more of these creations. Number 3 Banshees. 
Unbeknownst to many, the first Banshees were originally Night Elven women that died in the first Burning Legion invasion. They wandered the world for many millennia, having a deep hatred for life. Eventually, Nerzol became aware of them and promised them vengeance upon the living, giving them voices so that all would hear their pain. These were the initial Banshees of the Scourge. Later, as the invasion progressed, during the attack on Quotalas, the Scourge raised high elven Banshees with Artis, most notably raising Sylvanas. As the Lich King got weaker, he lost control over some of them and Sylvanas became the uniting force. Still, some Banshees remained enslaved to the Lich King and some even remained in the wilderness unaffiliated with anybody up to this day. They are ghost-like beings, having the ability to possess the bodies of their enemies as well as to corrupt their minds. Their dark powers were incredibly powerful and are still utilized by Sylvanas to this day. Number 2. Frost Worms one of the most powerful beings of the Scourge, if not the most powerful. Ages ago, dragons went to die in Northrend, and a big part of the continent is just littered with dragon remains. When the Lich King came to power, he took advantage of this and using necromancy raised many of the dead dragons. This created massive skeletal flying creatures that radiated cold power and nothing but the will to serve their master. Due to being mainly skeletal, they were incredibly hard to kill, massive and dangerous. With their ability to use cold breath as a weapon, they are able to shatter entire buildings by pulling moisture from the air and freezing them. While there are many smaller dragons, there were also very, very powerful blue dragons in the service of the Lich King, such as Indragosa, who was one of the more powerful of the dragon fights. While most of them have been defeated, the Frost Realms are still remembered as one of the most formidable creations of the Scourge. And lastly, number 1. Flesh Titans. Despite the name, they're not actually of titanic origin, but are called so because they're just massive and most powerful constructs of the Scourge. They were built from multiple sources and we have seen two of them. One was created from dead storm giants and another one, Thaddeus, was stitched together from fallen women and children, which was evident in the notable but creepy screams. Regardless, these beings are incredibly powerful. They are extremely massive, intelligent and even possess deadly electrical power. It is just sickening even thinking about how many dead would be required to create these massive prisons of flesh. We were lucky that the Lich King didn't get stronger and that he only formed two of these because if more flesh titans were created, defeating the Scourge would have been an entirely different endeavor. After these monstrosities, let's tune it down a bit and let's look at the more natural side of Azeroth, the monsters you can encounter in the wilderness that are arguably even more dangerous than some of these amalgamations. On Azeroth, there is no shortage of danger, but some creatures are on a whole nother level. Let's take a look into the top 10 most terrifying monsters on Azeroth, looking at the beasts native to our planet. Number 10. Spiders Spiders are one of the most common monsters and they can be found across every corner of Azeroth. You can find anything from regular spiders to fell, undead and bone spiders. They can be as tiny as little critters and absolutely massive where you would need an entire raid party to face off against one. We don't really know how they came into existence, what is their exact origin, but they're very diverse as a species. Many of them are just wild beasts and really have no other instincts but to just hunt, but Scourge found incredible use for them, enhancing them with powers of undead. We've even seen the Forsaken make use of the spiders, so outside of the wild beasts, they can be part of army. Depending on their characteristics, they have a wide range of attacks, from poison and webs from a distance, up to getting up close and personal and just attacking with their countless legs. As creators, they wouldn't be too scary, but the massive ones can be nearly the size of a mammoth and the average ones the size of a torrent. A 10 feet tall spider is definitely not something you would ever want to encounter. Number 9. Mammoths 
large shaggy beasts mainly found on Norton. They resemble the Draenor Elec and they're pretty close to the depiction of mammoths in the real world. They are massive, dangerous and are used as mounts by giants, most notably the Sons of Hodir. There are many variations, the more feral and primal, the woolly mammoths, the grand ice mammoths, giant beasts that can be mounted by multiple riders, as well as the variations of fur such as the black and ice white mammoth. They seem to have very thick fur, tough skin that isn't easily pierceable and on some occasions actual skin armor. Overall, they're peaceful creatures that are tameable, but despite the fact that certain brave adventurers hunt them, the mammoths are in no way, shape or form easy prey. With proper riders, they're fearless in battle and there isn't much that can stop them. Even though players can use them as mounts, so they might not seem that large, the in-game representation really doesn't do them justice. Number 8. Worms Worms may seem like critters, but there are some absolute units out there that are incredibly dangerous. Some of the more notable ones on Azeroth are the Sandworms and the Jormungar. Jormungar in particular are said to have been created by Loken, although I'd guess he only enhanced the already existing race as the worms can be found across almost every corner of Azeroth. Long ago, the Nerubians had enslaved them and used them in order to dig out and to establish the vast groundwork for their civilization. However, after the War of the Spider and the loss of the Nerubians against the Scourge, they seem to have gone rogue and just harassed the residents of Northern. They are fiercely aggressive, possessing groves of incredibly sharp teeth that can bite through rock and muscular bodies adapted to digging underground through very tough surfaces. They're said to be best dealt with in the early stages as once they establish a colony, they spread like wildfire and they're incredibly hard to contain. While Muradin, for example, managed to slay a Jormungar, the worm nearly devoured his group. They're particularly dangerous as they can move underground and jump out as an explosion of an attack completely unexpectedly. Seeing as they spend most of their time moving in tunnels, you never know when a Jormungar could ambush you and attack you, making them incredibly deadly and unpredictable predators. Number 7. Chimaira no one really knows exactly how these beings came to be, but we know with 100% certainty that they're absolutely terrifying. While there is a version of them on Outland, as far as we know, they are native to Azeroth and are something of a mix between a dragon and a viver. Gigantic, two-headed, flying monsters that mostly live above the dark forests of Kalimdor. Aside from their claws, clawed wings and two heads, they're also capable of various bread abilities from frost to lightning, each incredibly deadly. During the third war, we had seen the Night Elves riding them and causing tremendous damage against the undead and legion structures, as well as against their forces. However, Chimaira are no enslaved mounts and the only reason they joined the Calderai is that they were the largest force to oppose the demonic army that threatened the entire planet and they felt the duty to help Azeroth. Despite their ferocity and the fact that they're absolutely scary monsters, there are still people out there that consume them and goblins that find their eggs absolutely delicious. Whether this is actually true or not, I'm guessing very few would be willing to actually find out. Number 6. Magnator Remember the mammoths we previously covered? Well, the Magnator are like the evil psychopathic versions of mammoths on steroids. These guys are up to 30 feet in height, around 10 meters and weigh up to 20 tons. Half of their body is that of a mammoth and the upper torso is a humanoid with tusks. In a way, they're like the 10 times larger centaur, they're just a different northern version. No one really knows how these guys came to be, what is their origin. It is said that they might be related to scenarios, but nothing is completely confirmed. What we do know is that they're very few in numbers, they're gigantic, incredibly aggressive and asocial. They typically see everyone as inferior and very rarely do they even get in contact with other Magnator and if they do, it usually results in a bloody fight. They live their life by raiding and the Magnator definitely do raid everything from caravans to camps and even cities. They don't really use any specific strategy, they just charge with their massive tusks and swing their clump around, only for cities they have to at least group up, which is one of the reasons why the city attacks really happen. 
They are sadistic, brutal and incredibly dangerous, yet Garrosh did manage to enslave quite a few of them and even brought 8 to fight on Kalimdor. Even though ultimately defeated, the Magnator wreaked absolute havoc upon the Alliance forces. After all the wars, the Scourge and everything in between, their numbers have definitely dwindled and are more likely lower than ever, but regardless, you wouldn't ever want to encounter these guys when venturing through Norton. Number 5. Dinosaurs Dinosaurs are large, powerful and extremely diverse beings native to Azeroth. When I say diverse, I really mean it. They're everything from raptors that you encounter to flying pterodacts, underwater Thrashodon and the extremely deadly Devilsaur. As far as we know, the Brutosaur are the largest dinosaurs native to Zandalar and are extremely rare. They are long-necked and used by the Zandalari Empire, but they aren't particularly aggressive. In terms of actual danger, and when I say danger, I really mean danger, the Devilsaur are the main actors. These guys are amongst the largest predators on all of Azeroth, few in numbers, but incredibly deadly. We've seen them on Zandalar, Northern, Pandaria and Kalimdor. They can be taller than 30 feet, therefore larger than a Magnator, but on average around the same size as the Magnator. The reason they're called Devil Swords is due to their insane aggression, ferocity and ill temper. Dinosaurs overall are greatly valued by the Zandalari and trolls in general and they're often used as mounts but even they, as highly experienced Dynamasters with thousands of years of experience, often have trouble dealing with these creatures. Really, dinosaurs, especially certain species, are definitely one of the deadliest predators in all of Azeroth. Number 4. Hydras no one really knows how these beasts came to be. There is a strong connection between them and the old gods and some are said they have been their pets, but whether they are native or the old gods have created them we don't really know. It is likely that they are a native race and some were enhanced or transformed, but they are most likely not direct old god creations. Nonetheless, these amphibious beasts can be found across Darkshore, Ashenvale, Dustwallow Marsh and Ashara and are incredibly dangerous and aggressive. Their size really can vary, but certain hitters like Zilla can be 10-15 times larger than a troll, which makes them absolutely massive. Generally, hydras have three heads, they're somewhat intelligent, and each head can have its own set of behaviors. Aside from being essentially armored with their skin and gigantic, they're notoriously hard to kill as their wounds heal incredibly quickly even as you fight them. On occasion, they can also split into smaller hydras when the large one disappears. How this mechanism works, no one really knows. Hydras seem to be quite rare, but we have no doubt that they're one of the most vicious and deadly beasts across all of Azeroth. Number 3. Whale Sharks Whale sharks are one of the largest beings currently in all of Azeroth. They aren't called whale sharks because they're as big as whales, but because they're gigantic sharks that devour whales. Sharks overall are really not that big. They're dangerous, but they can be dealt with with regular weapons. There are also whale sharks around that are smaller. Some patrol Suramar and even go into the canals of Suramar city, but then there are some absolutely humongous beasts that patrol Vashir and Thousand Needles. They are extremely few in numbers and as far as we know there aren't more than just a few of them on Azeroth, but we know for certain that you never want to run into one of them. Whale sharks are horrific leviathans whose sole purpose is to devour everything they can find in sight and if you just see it from a distance, chances are you're too close and that you won't be able to do much to escape. So while monsters and beasts are hunted, some are better left alone. Number 2. Kraken Just like in the real world, the real predators are deep within the ocean. There are two types of Kraken, both equally scary, the fish and the squid-like. Squid-like ones are said to be servants of Neptulon and are mainly within the elemental plane, although they sometimes transcend into the material one. Gigantic and the mortal fear for any sailor, these beasts can easily destroy ships with their tentacles and can devour anyone aboard. It is said that they can be over 50 or 60 feet tall or nearly 20 meters and as far as we know they are very few in numbers. Next to them there are the fish like Kraken which we know very little about and in my opinion they are even scarier than the squid ones. They have gigantic mouths, spikes, scales and armored hides. We've seen them all across Azeroth from Pandaria to Northern. They can be smaller, but they can also be gigantic, probably even larger than the squid-like Kraken. They resemble the Naga in a way, but are much, much bigger. 
Luckily for all of us, both of these types are rare and very hard to encounter, and as far as we know, there are probably around 20 or so across all of Azeroth, which is good for mortals, as if you encounter these guys, there is very little you can do unless you have insanely powerful magic or a mythical demigod at your side. And lastly, number 1, Dragons. Dragons are the deadliest and the most terrifying species on all of Azeroth. As all of the current dragon fights were enhanced by the keepers and are titan altered and most of them are civilized, they aren't really monsters, so I will be focusing on the proto-dragons, the actual native race that all the other dragons evolved from. Proto-dragons came into existence from elementals that weren't imprisoned and gradually they transformed into creatures of flesh and blood. As opposed to their noble children, proto-dragons display none of the wisdom or the intelligence and are generally dangerous beasts that devour twice their own weight in raw meat daily. There are various versions and colors and they all have varying abilities but the most important characteristic is their size. They can be regular sized as to be used as mounts by the Rykel but they can grow absolutely gigantic as was the case with Galakrond. Galakrond resulted to cannibalism which increased his size and mutated his body to a ridiculous extent. This is the monster that the original dragon aspects fought which caused them to become aspects in the first place. Galakrond is without a doubt the most dangerous beast to have ever lived on Azeroth just with this picture Alone, you can see how ridiculously large this creature was and you can also observe his remains in dragon bite, just his bones. Luckily for us, Galakrond no longer exists, but the dragons are still around. A big number of them lost and much of them civilized and intelligent, but proto dragons exist and you wouldn't want to become a part of their daily meat intake. And with the monsters out there, let us look at what zones are the most dangerous across the Warcraft universe where you don't want to get caught in defenseless. I will be giving you top 10 most dangerous zones in World of Warcraft. Covering zones all across the different planets, not just Azeroth. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10. Dread Wastes One of the least barren zones on this list, but at the same time one of the most dangerous. The Dread Wastes are the home to the Mantid race, the Old God Servants. A massive wall separates this zone from the rest of Pandaria and for thousands of years the Mantid would constantly hurl themselves against it. The entire area is filled with Kiperi trees that produce amber, which is the main material that the Mantid use. These old god servants built an entire empire here with complex architecture and an entire culture. The release of the Shaofir began corrupting the land itself, which is evident by the death of the trees and the general appearance of the dread wastes. A massive forest filled with gigantic intelligent bugs definitely deserves a spot on this list. Number 9. Nazmir One of the three regions in Sandalar, Nazmir is a swamp riddled with ruined and lost monuments, horrific beasts and the blood trolls. Long ago it was a lush forest and the shining heart of the troll civilization. However, when the cataclysm shattered Azeroth, it started sinking into the sea and turned into a swamp. It is most notable for harboring a secret facility of the titans where they had studied the old gods and unintentionally created Gahun. Initially, the trolls settled with their capital here, but upon learning about the old god creature, they ventured south. Nazmir is home to many dangerous beings within the water, air and the ground. It is also the home to the blood trolls, the servants of the blood god Gahun. While Gahun was defeated, Nazmir still remains as a scary swamp filled with numerous dangerous creatures. Number 8. Plaguelands Technically two zones, the Eastern and the Western Plaguelands. Originally it was just known as the Northern Regions of Lordran, but today it is still a desolate place. When the Scourge Invasion began, Lordran was among the first to fall and quite a lot of atrocities and horrors were committed upon these lands. 
Lands. After the defeat of the Lich King, the Plague Lands became safer, but still many lingering undead remain. Much of the ground was destroyed, and it isn't the most hospitable place on Azeroth. The Argent Crusade has been working on restoring the Plague Lands, and while there has been limited success, it still really isn't a zone you'd want to venture to. Number 7. Hellfire Peninsula once known as Tanan Jungle, Hellfire Peninsula is one of the most desolated places across the universe. Long ago, it was a lush jungle, but after the destruction of Draenor, it is a dry, barren wasteland. A completely shattered area that even has small islands floating around in the nether. Aside from the Horde and the Alliance bases, there is barely any life there, as it is extremely inhospitable. Most notable for the Dark Portal, the place where the Orcish Horde first got into Azeroth. As Nerzul's magic shattered the planet, it was essentially ground zero for the explosion. Demons are scattered all across the zone, as well as corrupted fell orcs. Aside from dry air and the danger, Hellfire Peninsula doesn't hold much for any potential travelers. Number 6. Vashir Quite a lot different than all the other zones, but if you're scared of deep seas, Vashir would be the most dangerous one. Literally an underwater region with a massive naga base. In game it isn't as scary, but imagine going so deep beneath the ocean that there is barely any light there. To top all of this, there are massive kraken, sharks and all sorts of horrific creatures. The worst of all being the actual old god creations, the naga, which have a kingdom down there and want to conquer all of Azeroth. Scary, scary place. Number 5. Zangarmarsh once known as the Zangar Sea, today it is one of the most dangerous swamps in the universe. It was formed from the Zangar Enroachment as the fungal swamps released thousands of spores and slowly grew inland over time. The zone we have today was also formed through the destruction of Draenor. This was the place where the Draenei fled after the Orcish invasion of their cities and it sheltered the broken Draenei. The entire area is unlike most of Outland and it contains quite a few lifeforms, although very dangerous ones. Zangar Marsh is also home to many deadly spores which could lead to death just through sheer inhalation. Ogres, demons, naga, spore bats are all creatures you can find within Zangar Marsh. Overall, quite an eerie place. Number 4. Ice Crown not much is known of this zone prior to the Scourge formation, although it is said that the capital of the Nerubian Kingdom was located here. Ice Crown was the zone where the Frozen Throne was built as Kill Jaden slammed Ner'zhul into the glacier. The zone itself is one of the scariest places across all of Azeroth. Massive, cold, barren wasteland with gigantic spikes and mountains. Just the icy wind alone itself could kill you here, but what makes this scary are the undead. There are so many undead creations here, anything from ghouls to massive skeletons, frost worms and abominations. Even though Artis was defeated, the zone remains much the same and there are still undead roaming around with no signs of life. Number 3. Nether Storm one of the most unique zones across the universe. Originally, it was known as Farallon or the Fields or Plains of Farallon, a lush island east of Gorgrond, formed from the body of an ancient spore mount, Botan. However, when Draenor was sundered, it was completely destroyed. Today, it is literally a floating island in the Twisted Nether and is locked in a constant magical storm that is deteriorating the land. The soil assumed a sickly purple color that supports no plant life and the land mass is ripped apart and warped. Various races use it to siphon energy and as it is floating in the Twisting Nether, many horrific beings appear from all across the universe, including void creatures. Aside from the Eco Dome that was created, Nether Storm is one of the most inhospitable places in the universe. Number 2. The Broken Shore 
Hardly a true zone, but on Azeroth it is one of the most desolate places. Originally it was a portion of Suramar and was known as Taldranath. However, when the Great Sundering happened, much like the other parts of the landmass, it was sent to the bottom of the ocean as it wasn't covered by the Suramar shield. Many years later, when Agewin fought against the Avatar of Sargeras, she arrived there to hide the fallen titan. However, during the second war, Gul'dan would raise the entire island from the bottom of the sea, but was torn to shreds when he entered the tomb. Recently, it was the staging ground for the last Burning Legion invasion and the main focus of the war. The region itself is completely barren and the only thing there are demons, demonic bases and the horde in the alliance and camp. And lastly, number 1, Argus. Not really a single zone, but there is no point in separating it since this entire planet is extremely dangerous. I don't know if it gets any more dangerous than the actual stronghold of the Burning Legion. Argus was once a utopian world inhabited mainly by the Eredar. As they were corrupted by Sargeras, the entire planet was warped, destroyed and the titan's soul within was tortured and used as an engine for the massive legion army. Today, as the burning legion was defeated, it isn't as dangerous but it was literally the main base of the burning legion. A completely barren planet filled with demons, toxic gases, spikes, essentially the opposite of life. 